I'm a little more than halfway through the Flux Academy Webflow Masterclass, and so far I've been really enjoying it. It's not perfect, and I'll talk about why later in this course, but at this point, I feel like I have a much stronger grasp on how to use Webflow in actual practice. Um, this course goes into a lot of detail in not only how to use Webflow, but how to integrate it with other tools, how to sell Webflow to uh, potential clients, as well as how to just efficiently deliver Webflow to clients. And so in this video, I'm gonna go over um, some things that I like about the course so far, some areas for improvement, as well as just what I've learned so far. So let's hop to my computer and take a look. All right, so I know it says that I'm 82% complete with this course, but I don't think that's actually true. And the reason I say that is because I still have to build out an entire web page for this fitness coach uh, website. And that has a lot of advanced animations and advanced layouts, so I have to build that out. And then for the final project submission, supposedly I have to create another web page, I think from scratch, and then I send that to the Webflow team and then they give feedback. And ultimately, once they approve that project, then I can get a certificate. So as far as I'm concerned, I still have a lot to go. So with that being said, I just wanna talk about um, some things that are helpful to know about this course. One thing that I like a lot is that as they go through the different material, they teach the different features of Webflow in a very applicable way. So when the instructor talks about sliders and carousels, tabs and light boxes, he is going over how to do it, not just in isolation, but how to actually do it within the context of a web page. So if I go to the web page that I'm ultimately building out, it's this real estate website. And so within this website, it goes over uh, different positioning techniques. And each section just sort of has a new feature that builds upon what I've learned previously. So how to create this cool highlight, how to do these transition effects for cards, how to create grids, uh, more positioning, how to incorporate, this is actually a Lottie animation, so how to incorporate Lottie animations. There's these text overflow things and animations that I'll talk about later, uh, later and then light boxes. So every section just sort of builds upon what I've learned previously, and I think that's just a really well done way to organize a course. Um, the other thing is that um, the instructor, Ron Segal, does a really good job at just narrating what he's doing as well as explaining why he's doing certain things. And especially in the beginning of the course and in this uh, first section here, the Mastering the Fundamentals, he does a good job at pretty much hand-holding my way through the process of learning Webflow and, and how to use the tools within the context of building a web page. One thing that I do no that I did notice is that as I go through the course, he starts to provide less and less handholding. So for example, in the first few videos, he talks about how to create a section. And so in every video, he, he talks about how you create the section, how you create the uh, the how you create the combo class for vertical spacing so that every section has the same spacing. And he goes through how to do that, but then after a while, he stops telling you how to do that. And it's a really good way for me to just apply what I learned so that I'm not just blindly following what he's doing on the screen, but I'm actually taking ownership of what I'm learning and applying. And so he does a good job at tapering off how much handholding that he does uh, when it comes to using Webflow. So that's the, the the fundamentals is basically how to design this web page, and then the next part of it is going over the the CMS. And this is the one section where I felt like the course probably went and well, at least for me, a little bit too quickly. Like he goes over a lot of material in a pretty short amount of time, and so in this section, you basically get to learn how to create a CMS team section, you get to learn how to, let me see if I can just pull it out real quick. Um, you get to learn, 
let me go to, I should have pulled this up before. You get to learn how to create like this different properties page. So if you don't know what a CMS is, it's a content management system where you can create these dynamic pages. And so um, he basically shows you how to create this CMS for different real estate listings. And this is very complex. And I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't able to follow everything. Ron still does a good job explaining what he's doing, but um, he also bypasses a lot of the design steps with creating this because he assumes that I already know how to do that. And in theory, yeah, I probably do, but it still makes for this section kind of feeling like it's faster than the other ones. And so it's really just a matter of, I just need to go back and practice using this because I, I don't really feel that comfortable using CMS at this point. Um, and that's really the main thing that I think that if you want to get the most use of this course, it's watching these videos. And if you don't understand it, it's going back and seeing if you can create what he's done on your own without him showing you. And I think that's a real way to show that you've mastered the material. And so I did that with some of the easier CMS sections, but I have not tackled doing this on my own because this is very uh, advanced. So I guess it's a good thing that he shows the advanced stuff, but it does make it um, a little tough when he's going through at a at a at what I would consider to be a somewhat quicker pace than what was previously done in the in the other section. Uh, the following is the, the animations. And this, uh, I think he did a really good job at going over. I didn't really feel lost in this section. He did a good job at going over just how to work within this animations panel here um, and how to create different animations on page load. Uh, so like, for example, he goes over simple things such as creating a, a slide in effect of different text on how this would slide in. He creates um, different animations for hover effects as well as like the page load animation that I talked about. So to give a sense on what that's like, I'll, I'll show you what this looks like uh, fully animated. So it has like the sort of a preload and then all this stuff fading in. It just looks very modern. And then as you scroll through, he shows you how to create sort of this parallax effect. Um, these cards slide in as you saw, and then he shows, this was really neat. So how to create this sort of tilting effect as you hover your mouse, that's really neat. Incorporating Lotties, uh, this horizontal scroll that also fills in this outline is really freaking cool. So he goes over a lot of advanced animations that I just didn't see on the Webflow University. Um, so I really liked this section. Uh, let's see, going on, um, apologize if this video is a little long, just trying to be a little comprehensive here. So the web building process, uh, the thing I really liked about this is that he goes on how to work with a style guide. That was one thing that I wasn't really sure how to do. Like certainly I know how to create a style guide in Figma, but how do you utilize a, uh, a style guide that you've created in Figma and how do you utilize that within Webflow? And he goes over how to do that as well as providing a template style guide that you can use for all of your um, uh, Webflow projects, which is really cool. Uh, aside from this, he, he goes over just how to efficiently deliver a website to a client as well as just a checklist for making sure your website is good to go as far as accessibility and just a checklist for making sure the um, your SEO is good and whatnot. Um, and then this section is just how to sell Webflow to clients. So the main thing that he talks about here is why someone would want to use Webflow versus WordPress. And he talks about the different reasons for each. And so that's good, just to good knowledge to have for when you're talking with clients. The advanced topics is uh, different because it's taught by a different instructor. It's taught by uh, this guy named, I think his name is Carbatza, if, if I have his name right. And so he goes over a lot of advanced tools, such as how to utilize, uh, how, to, oops, how to utilize different uh, tools to integrate with Webflow, how certain extensions that you can use that really speed up the Webflow process. He goes over different community tools, such as wizardry and uh, 
FinSuite client first. And uh, just very helpful things to know about that are, as it says, very advanced. All right, so I think that is pretty much it for what I've done so far. So going forward, the main thing I have to do now is build out this advanced fitness coach website, and then I have to do the final project project submission. But hopefully this gave you like a look at what this course is um, what this course is like so far. So not only has this course been immensely helpful so far, but it's also just been enjoyable to go through. I can't tell you how many courses that I've taken that have just been so painfully boring, where the course instructor shows how to use a given design tool or go over a certain technique, but doesn't show how to do it in actual practice. And that just makes for a very uninspiring experience. But because this Flux Academy Webflow Masterclass teaches pretty much most everything you need to know about web Webflow, but through the lens of actually designing a website, multiple websites actually, it just makes learning the material much more engaging. And let's address the elephant in the room. Yeah, this course is very expensive at almost 700 US dollars. And I don't really feel like I can give a full review at this point because I haven't gone through the whole course. But what I will say is I don't regret getting this course. It goes into a lot of detail in terms of how to use Webflow in an applicable way. And it often goes into more depth than a lot more depth than what the Webflow University courses do. The only section where that's not true is the CMS section that I talked about. I think that the Webflow University actually does a better job at explaining the CMS or maybe not even explaining it, but just a better job at handholding, which I think is better for a beginner. The Flux Academy CMS section is not bad by any means. They explain technically everything that you would need to know. There's just less handholding. So I that the, the onus is now on me to go back and actually apply um, what they talk about. But if you're someone who likes the handholding, then the Webflow University is actually better for uh, the CMS section. But with that being said, if you'd like to learn more about the course, there is a link in the description below. It is an affiliate link, so if you'd like to support this channel, then that is a great way to do so. And if you are interested in the final review for this, when that becomes available, you can check that out here. And if you found this video to be helpful, it would mean a lot if you hit the subscribe button. And until next time, I will see you in the next video. Take care.